Hey, this is Ricky Gantz with G220 Ministries. You can find out more by going to www.g220ministries.com. In 2017, we did the first ever Flood the Sidewalk event. Now, what this event was, was us standing against abortion. G220 Ministries hosted this event, and we had about 50 people, I believe, uh, come out to stand against this evil to be voice for the voiceless and we had this opportunity to proclaim the gospel uh, throughout the morning to those going inside to those security guards that were there to the, the escorts that were escorting women in uh, to murder their babies and yes abortion is murder well, at this event, uh, Flood the Sidewalk, Daniel Parvin, who is a brother, a faithful, faithful brother, who goes out to preterm uh, more than once a week to proclaim the gospel and to share the good news and to call on these mothers to, to turn to Jesus Christ and to, to flee from that place of death uh, and not to murder their child. And so... He had a few minutes to give a presentation uh, and speak to those going in there. And so this clip here that you're about to see was again from the 2017 Flood the Sidewalk event hosted by G220 Ministries at Preterm, the largest abortion provider in the state of Ohio. Here is that clip. Expectant mothers. Expectant mothers and fathers in preterm. My name is Daniel. Let me tell you about the life in the womb. Today's advanced imaging technology offers a unique and intimate look at the world of the developing child within the womb, from conception to full term. We can now take a never-before-seen journey into life's beginnings, visible through ultrasound and electron microscope pictures, such as in National Geographic's In the Womb. During weeks 6 through 11, In the Womb reveals the most dramatic transformation of the entire pregnancy. By that stage, all the baby's organs have been formed, and the tiny person is still less than 3 inches long. At only 21 days after conception, the baby's heart begins beating. And at 40 days, brain waves can be measured. The baby in the womb can move and respond to stimulation at six weeks and can suck her thumb at eight weeks in the womb. At 12 weeks, the baby has eyelids, ears, toes, a fully formed mouth, fingernails, and fingerprints. According to the book In the Womb, the 12-week-old baby is 3.4 inches long, has all essential organs, a working circulatory system, a distinguishable sex, with red blood cells being produced in the liver, and the baby can make a fist with his or her fingers. In the Womb explains that the moment of conception is when an individual's unique set of DNA is created a human signature that never existed before and will never be repeated. Human life is present from the moment of conception. At that moment, a baby's life has begun. So answer this question, when is it okay to kill a baby in the womb? What justification can you give for taking the life of another human being? God says in his word, Whoever hates his brother is a murderer, and that no murderer has eternal life. How much more, then, is it a sin to actually take the life of a baby through abortion? You and I will one day stand before God and answer for everything you have done. How will you do on that day? Now, as you can see, um, this is a very serious ministry uh, that we do to go and minister to those at abortion providers, at abortion centers. I don't like to call them clinics uh, because they are not uh, ultimately offering help to these women, uh, but seeking to end the lives of their, their babies. 
Uh, babies are murdered at these abortion providers. Uh, this is not just a non-life. This is a baby in the womb uh, that is being murdered. And so we take that very seriously, and God takes that very seriously. And so we go to proclaim the gospel because the gospel is the power unto salvation, uh, where when people hear the gospel, God uses that to bring them to true saving faith. So we preach the gospel uh, that the ladies, the women going in, and those that are workers there, and anyone passing by would hear the gospel and turn to Jesus Christ. We ultimately want to see their souls saved, uh, but we also know that it is a life and death situation at that moment when these mothers are going in uh, to murder their child. And so we plead with them to turn from that place. And so please be in prayer for all those who go out and stand at abortion centers to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. There are many people that go out there and do that. Uh, many Catholics go out there and do that. And they don't give them Jesus Christ because they cannot offer what they do not have. But those true biblical Christians who are going out and standing against this evil of abortion, we pray for them. And we, we ask you to pray with us, <clears throat> excuse me, as we pray for them uh, to go out there. And if, if, if the Lord has laid it upon your heart to do so, uh, find some good brothers and sisters in Christ that are ministering faithfully to those at these abortion centers and go and join them and learn from them and be uh, discipled by them as they minister at this place of death. Uh, this is the evil of our day. Uh, let us stand against it and plead with those women to not murder their child, but to turn to Jesus Christ, who is the only one who can set us free from the bondage of our sin the only one who can give us true peace and hope and joy, it's only found in Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone.